Hello everyone, welcome to our first guide video. Uh, so for this first one, I'm going to literally walk through step by step everything in the guide just to help us uh, be able to use our new software, specifically uh, our commander and uh, possibly a little bit of Excel. Uh, anyhow, so I'm starting basically from scratch and we're going to first start off by getting into my open math. So let's go ahead and open up our window. Uh, be sure that you're getting into your 2050 spring 20 and there's a couple ways that we can get to our guide so I've moved the from being due on Friday to being due on Monday um, but how we get to it is inside of core one we are going to go to section one and we're scrolling down to our coursework and if we scroll a little bit further down uh, we can find it in our guide for how to do a frequency table. So let's go ahead and click on that guy. Click on the frequency table. And I'm just going to go ahead and click my start the assessment. Okay, so we've only got the one question. If there were more, you could see them in a drop down box right here. Uh, but here we go. It says here we have some data that your box collected on ages of paying customers at his ice cream shop. He asks you to summarize it. Seeing as he is not giving you a bunch of direction, you decided that some simple frequency tables, uh, just to do some simple frequency tables, here's the data that he collected. Okay, so the first thing that you might look at and say, what the heck, um, where's the data? Well, if this handy dandy little purple button, if you click on it, you are able to see all of the data. So we've got the customer age, we, and then we've got some gender, male, female, or other, if they respond, didn't respond, or was identified as something other than male or female, and for how satisfied they were from extremely dissatisfied to extremely satisfied. Okay, so we've got this data. If we scroll down, there's quite a lot of it. Um, there's some handy things. So if you're in a, uh, if you're using Chrome uh, or some other of the web browsers, there's a nice feature. Is if you just highlight straight across, and then look, if I go off to the side, it actually highlights all of the data just in that data box for you, which is really nice. Then we can just do right click and copy. Um, word of warning, uh, the Microsoft specific uh, like Edge and Explorer, I've had problems with them correctly copying the data before. So if I were you, I'd be using something like Firefox or Chrome um, or some, uh, I think even Internet Explorer, uh, or no, not Internet Explorer, Safari uh, works just fine. So once again, I'm going to copy this and then I'm just going to hide the data and then let's go ahead and get our data into our commander. So I'm going to just go ahead and open up my R Studio. Click on that guy. And so my R Studio comes and pops up. And I'm going to try to blow this up so that, so that it is a li little easier to see. And let's see, if I go to view, and I think if I go to zoom in, I can make this bigger a couple of times. Okay, so I've got it zoomed in a little bit like that. Then I'm going to type in R Commander, R C M D R. So underneath the packages and the search function, uh, there is, remember, the plugin for teaching the statistical methods. I think that this guy is the one that I want. So I'm just going to go click on the R Commander plugin, click it right here. And if you see, it is going to go ahead and pull this up. It might take a little bit for it to load, um, but it should be able to get there. So we'll just give it a second or two. Okay, so if you've done it correctly, we've got this pop-up box, and we should have this one right here called Basic Statistics. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually get our data that we just copied and put it into our commander. So I'm going to, well, first of all, I'm going to organize my files just a little bit. I'm going to hide this guy kind of off to the side, and give me just a moment. That guy a little bit bigger and I'll push that guy over there okay so now with our commander I'm going to go to data and I'm going to say import data and I'm going to import the data from the clipboard when you copy something on your computer it copies to what's called the clipboard and so I'm just going to go ahead and say that we're going to import it from there so I'm going to say clipboard 
and then I have to say tabs. That's the field separator. If you copy something onto the clipboard, uh, you need to have this tab separator. Um, the variable names in the file, so if you come back over here and look at what you copied, you want to copy this first line uh, because it is the titles of each of those uh, variables, and we want those variables name in the file, and then I'm going to rename this, I think I'm going to name this uh, ice cream. Okay, and then I'll just go ahead and click OK. Nope, I guess it didn't like that. Hold on. Sometimes it doesn't like me to rename these on a Mac. So I'm just going to leave it named as data set. That's fine. We'll go to clipboard tabs and click OK. Nope, still doesn't like it. Let's go copy this thing again. We're going to copy it and we will go to data import. Let's try this again. And there we go. So sometimes, like, periodically I'll have some problems. Maybe I actually didn't copy it or I copied something else. If you run into problems like that, you can always just try to recopy and then put it in again. And the way that I knew that it had errors is it kept on saying error cannot open the connection. And then when I tried it again, after I copied it again, it said the data set has 200 rows and three columns. So let's go see if that's true. We can go click on view data set and we see that we have customer age gender and satisfaction. All right, and if you notice, these, as we've been kind of discussing earlier on in this section, are three of our different types of data. So first we've got customer age, and customer age is a piece of numerical data, so that's very useful for us. Um, then we've got gender, and gender is nominal. It's categorical data that doesn't have a set order, so that one's nominal. And then we have satisfaction, and satisfaction is categorical as well, but this one actually does have like a set order that you could put in from one to five, and it has some meaning to it. So that one is ordinal data. Now, let's, now that we've kind of seen this, let's kind of take a look at our first question. It says, does data automatically get recognized as ordinal? Now the answer is no. Uh, unfortunately, R will only recognize things as numerical and as categorical. If you want it to be ordinal though, uh, we can actually force it to recognize it as ordinal. So what we can go is we can go to basic statistics and we're going to go to data and we're going to say manage variables in active data set and then we're going to say change variable type. I will right, we'll click on this one and notice it has nominal as gender and satisfaction and it has customer age as numeric. So customer age is correct, it is a numeric, but ordinal we actually uh, want satisfaction over. So I went and clicked on satisfaction and I want to move it to ordinal and if for whatever reason, I don't know why it selected the numerical one as well, but I'm going to take customer age and I'm going to throw it back to numerical. So gender was nominal, satisfaction, ordinal and customer age was numeric variables. And then I can just go ahead and click uh, OK. And it will uh, set that satisfaction as ordered. Now if you notice as we click on things and have our commander do stuff, it actually is producing this, uh, this code. And this is, if you are interested in learning the R programming language, this is the actual code that you could type and run. Um, now, I'm not expecting that we do that in this class, but if it's something that piques your interest, you can start paying attention to the code that comes popping out. Okay, so does data automatically get recognized as ordinal? That answer was no, and I showed you how we can do it. Okay, so the next one is where do we go to create a basic frequency table? Okay, so there's uh, a couple ways that we can do it. How we're going to do it today is we're going to go to uh, statistics and we are going to go to descriptive statistics and there's a couple of things that that we can do so we can look at frequency distributions for qualitative variables and there's some other ways that, that we can get to this but let's go ahead and start off with this so let's start off with making a table for our gender for our nominal variable so you go ahead and click on nominal here, make sure that it's grayed, and then we can just go ahead and click OK. And coming here, we can see that, hey, it has handled our frequency table. It has female, male, and other, and we can see that we have these first two, and in, in some of the Lightboard videos I've already discussed this, this is our count, or our frequency, and this is our relative frequency, or this is the percent of the time that 
we had a female, percent of the time that we had a male, and the percent of the time that we had an other. These are the raw counts, or how many people uh, responded uh, to each of those. Okay, so we can do that with nominal. Let's also go to basic statistics. Uh, let's go to, oh, sorry, descriptive statistics. And let's do for the qualitative variables again. Let's go click on that. And this time, instead of gender, let's go click on satisfaction. And if you want to deselect something, if you push, uh, it's, I think it's control, and you click on it, you can deselect it. But I'm going to go ahead and select this guy, and I'm going to click OK. Now this one, because it's ordinal, we both we also needed the cumulative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency. And so here we've got our frequency table for our uh, for our ordinal data. Last one that we've got is we can do basic statistics, descriptive statistics, and we can do numerical summaries. Now we can either do them as discrete or we can do them as just a numerical summary. Let's start off with just with numerical summaries and we'll do customer age and we can we can start off with this. We can click OK. So this just gives us kind of like a five number summary. We'll talk more about this in next week, uh, but let's go to our numerical summaries with discrete variables. We're going to click on the customer age and we're going to say that we want a frequency table. OK, now we can tell it what the breaks are supposed to be or we can kind of let it do its own thing. Uh, let's just let it do its own thing for right now and we're going to go ahead and click OK. OK, so for here, what it did uh, is it said that it took every single measurement that, that we had and it considered it as discrete data. So it took all the 23s, put them together, took all the 25s, put them together, all the 26s, put them together, and it gave us our counts. It gave us our uh, relative frequencies, our cumulative frequency, and our cumulative relative frequency all the way down for every possible outcome. Now, this is kind of big. It's not very useful. So what we really want to do is we want to bin this thing uh, as well. So what we can do is I'm going to go to basic statistics again and go to our descriptive statistics. We can come over to our discrete variables again. And when we do our frequency table, we can click in breaks. And let's say I just want five breaks in there. I'm just going to type in the number five and I'll click OK. OK, so what has happened now is we have put some bins on this thing. And you notice that we are getting uh, some uh, brackets and some parentheses and those actually have some specific meaning. Uh, so real quick, so when we get something that looks like this from like 23 comma 29.4 or how I have on this example 5 comma 10, uh, what this is really saying is that these this is the range kind of where we are interested in. Um, so when we look at this, uh, these have specific names and they are known as bins they are known as classes, and they are known as ranges. Uh, so those are kind of things that you'll hear them being called. And, and they contain um, the, the range from where, for where numbers are being contained. Okay, so we, we need to know what this square parent, what this square bracket and what this parenthesis means. So the square bracket definitely, it means closed. And the parenthesis like this means open. So if we kind of go down here, uh, we can start to find some different things. So closed means we're going to include. Open means we're going to exclude. So if we look down here, let's go to this little bracket guy. And that one is going to be include, which is I. That would mean if we've had a number that was 23, we'd put it into this bin. But if we had a number that was 29.4, we would kick it to the next group. And this one would contain 29.4. So this one would be include. And we would have this parenthesis be exclude a value. Okay, so if we know that, we can say that this is going to be a closed interval if we've got two brackets. So that would be C. And for parenthesis, parenthesis, that would be an open interval, which is D. Okay, so we see that we have at the top end, we have a closed, and this one we have like a bottom, closed, top, open. 
And so we can go look at this. So we have these where it's closed lower, open upper, which would be F. Sometimes you'll see these frequency tables where it does it the opposite way, just depending on how people want these set up. So this would be a open lower, closed upper. That guy would be E. All right, so the next ones is we just have these labels on the frequency tables now. So NI uh, is just going to be our, uh, let's see if I can find it here, it's just our count. So we'll have that guy be A. FI is going to be our relative frequency, or down at H, so that lowercase FI, relative frequency. And then capital NI is going to be our cumulative frequency, or the cumulative count is going to be G and then FI is going to be our cumulative relative frequency or letter B. Okay moving our way on down. Now there are some other ways that we can um, we can kind of adjust the bin sizes uh, so we could try to just include more we could try to exclude a few more uh, but I can show you some extra manipulation on bin sizes uh, in an advanced video that I will post uh, in conjunction with this one all right so the next one if we go down uh, we can say okay match the data types to their justification uh, so numerical data is numbers so we're just going to put that with B a nominal data is categorical with no natural order, that'd be A, and ordinal is categorical with a natural order. Okay, now you might ask like why we alter our bin sizes. Well, let me show you a few things that, that we can do. We already saw when we had a ton of bins, uh, we saw the individual counts of all these guys, and then I narrowed it down to like five bins, uh, and the nice thing about that is I was kind of able, it wasn't quite so spread out, I was able to get a little bit more concise summary. Um, so why do we adjust bins? Uh, sometimes it's to just simply summarize the data. Sometimes we're doing it to better reflect the reality of the data. Sometimes we are trying to show patterns and adjusting the bin size can better show these patterns. Um, so sometimes to better reflect the reality of the data and sometimes to find patterns. So in actuality, all of these are valid reasons of why we adjust our bin size. Now you may be asking, well, what's a good bin size? What's a bad bin size? And honestly, if you have too many bins, this is an example of too many. Like we've got only, you know, a couple of counts and we've got some holes in this data. Uh, it would be better if this was actually binned. Now, five may be too small. We might to actually want to expand this out a little bit so we can see a little bit more detail of what's going on. Um, but generally what happens if you have too many bins, uh, the data becomes kind of really spread out and you can't see anything. And if you have too few bins, like if you only have one bin, you'd throw all your data into a single bin and then you really can't see any pattern of what's going on. So you kind of want to find some middle ground of not being too spread out or too compact. Okay, so then at the bottom we have, we need to interpret these frequency tables. And so there's a bunch of different ways that, that we can handle this. Uh, for this first one, we're going to say how many customers had an age in the range of 30, 40. Now, if you look at this, uh, it's kind of hard for me to be able to interpret that because of how this bin uh, was, in fact, uh, set up. There are some ways that we can, uh, that we can actually force our, um, our frequency table uh, in order to make the exact bins uh, that we want. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So there are a couple ways that we can actually tackle uh, this rebinning it so that we can see this bin of 30 to 40. Okay, so I'll show you two examples of how we can do it and you can decide which one that you like better. Either one will get you to the same spot. So we're gonna go to the same place, statistics, Descriptive statistics, numerical summaries, discrete variables. We're going to say frequency table and breaks. Instead of just saying that breaks equals five, what we can do is we can actually say how many breaks we have. So what I'm going to do is I look at the bottom here and I notice that it's 23. So I'm just going to say that it, I'll put in 20 and then I'm going to do 30 and 40, 50. And then I notice that we don't go over 60. So I'm just going to put one more in at 60 right here. So I've got these bins, and I'm just going to go ahead and click uh, OK. 
Okay, and notice how we have from 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60. I've got the same sample size, this n equals 200. And now I could answer this question. So how many of the company customers had an age in this group? Notice close bottom, open top. And I would put in for mine, 82. Now you're, remember, your data is going to look different. That's okay. Everybody's data looks different, but the process is going to be exactly the same. All right, so that's one way that I could do this. Uh, the other way that I could do this is instead I could look at the actual code. I'm not going to force you to do this, um, but for sometimes it does help. So instead of actually typing out every one of those, I could just say where it says Cortes, um, I'm just going to delete that out and I'm going to type in a little bit of code. Uh, the code is going to be SEQ, stands for sequence, and then I'm going to do an open and close parenthesis. Now in between those new parentheses, I'm going to say that I'm going to start from 20, so that's my starting point. I'm going to go to 60, and I'm going to go by steps of 10. So from 20 to 60 by steps of 10. So I should get this exact same thing. Now what I need to do is I need to highlight the code that I'm interested in. So this is the calcular, resume in variables, anyhow. It's a whole bunch of stuff right here. You know what you need because it goes indent, indent, and then all the way in. So that is my code that I'm interested in. And if I just click submit, check it out. It popped it up exactly as I wanted again. So anyways, there's two ways that we can adjust bin size. Um, probably the simpler way, more straightforward way, is to just go through the basic statistics, go to the numerical summaries, and actually just type out where we want each of this, the from 20 to 30, then 30 to 40, 40 to 50. It doesn't take too long, and you can just click those and click OK, and there it kicks it out. OK, so now we've got this next question. What percentage of the customers identified as male? So I'm going to go back. You could scroll up. I've cleared it out at this point, so I'm going to run it again. I'll go to my descriptive statistics. Once again, let's go to frequency distributions. I'm going to look at gender, and I'll click OK. And in here, I see that how many identified as male, I would put that as 0.425. Now, when I ask for percentages, I am basically exclusively, unless if I tell you otherwise, I want them in decimal form. So this is 42.5%. I want it in this format, not in 42.5%. That's not what I want. So 0.425. Okay, great. We'll come on down and we'll see how many of the customers had a neutral or worse experience. Okay, uh, let's go and once again take a look at our ordinal data. Get rid of gender real quick, our satisfaction. I'll click OK. And so this one is how many had a neutral or worse experience? Okay, so let's look at neutral. So there are 72 who had neutral. Here were 35 who was dissatisfied, worse than neutral, and extremely dissatisfied is 26. I could take the time to add those all up, but guess what? That's already been done. That's what the cumulative frequency is. It's the sum of a specific line and everything before. In this case, how many of the customers had a neutral or worse experience? I could just type in 133. Okay, last one here. How many of the customers had an age of at least 40? So let's go back up and look at this one. Okay, so at least 40, that goes 40 or above. So I'd look at everybody in this bin and everybody in this bin. Uh, so what I could do, there's a couple ways that I could do this. I could either just add up these two, that's probably the most simple, add up these two counts of the bins that I'm interested in. Or I could take a complement, I could take the sample size minus the cumulative frequency of the one before. Um, so if I were to do this, Let's let me just type this out real quick. So it'd be 200 minus, I got 200 because it's the sample size. I'm going to minus 92 from the cumulative frequency of the one before 40. So that would be minus 92, would give me 108. The other way that I could do this is I could do 189 plus 9, or sorry, 89 plus 19. If I do that 89 plus 19, gives me that same value of 108. Okay, so now that I have submitted 
these, we can go through and see that, check, yep, I have gotten greens all of the way down, which means that I got 100% on this particular section. And you should be able to get 100% on your particular guide as well. Uh, good luck to all of you.